and we are here to recap a wild free agency period. Hopefully you caught part one, in which we covered moves 25 through 14 we found important. Today, we're going to cover the biggest moves of free agency, 13 through number one. Let's get into it here, Evan. We left off at number 14, biggest move of free agency. Let's go to number 13 here to start today. Number 13 is Broncos trade Jerry Judy to the Cleveland Browns for round five plus a round six pick. Now, Jerry Judy was headed or is in his fifth year option. So this is a great deal for the Browns, I thought. Broncos had to do it to solve their salary cap issues. But the Browns are going to get a look at Jerry Judy for almost nothing around five and around six pick. And then if they don't like it, he's off their cap after a year. So Browns now have Amari Cooper, David Njoku, Elijah Moore, and Jerry Judy for Deshaun Watson. Evan, what do you think of the Browns going out and getting Mr. Judy? I think he's worth a shot. I think that he's shown that he's a very flawed player, not the player that we saw at Alabama, has had a lot of injuries. I mean, recurring high ankle sprain stuff, um, you know, doesn't catch the ball consistently. Looks like he should be a good route runner, but really isn't that great of a route runner. Um, but I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I think he's worth a, he's, he's worth a shot. I mean, for, for the cost of a fifth and sixth round pick, yeah, the one thing that I thought was a little bit disappointing is that we're not going to see. I mean, the Browns have used third round picks on Cedric Tillman last year and David Bell the year before. They're not even going to give those guys opportunities because mm-hmm. um, it's going to be, you're right, in three receiver sets, probably Elijah Moore in the slot, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy outside. So we actually have Judy, well, we have uh, Amari earning the most targets, then in Joku, and then a gap back to Judy, and then it got back there from Elijah Moore. But I'm not like convinced on that, that Judy's definitely going to play ahead of Elijah Moore. I, who do you think's better, Evan? I mean, I, I, it's based on draft capital everybody and, and name value, people are going to say Judy. But I'm not convinced that Judy's necessarily better than Elijah Moore. What do you think? I'm not either. I, I do think a change of scenery is, is a good thing for Jerry Judy, potentially. But yeah, Elijah Moore, an extra year in the system. I thought he was fine last year. Um, I, I yeah, I, I don't know who's going to play in two receiver sets. We'll, we'll have to figure that out. Yep. All right. In quarterback news, just mentioned the Broncos stuff. Russell Wilson signs with the Steelers. Now the Steelers get to be, get Russell Wilson for like one point two million because the Broncos are still paying him all of his money. When this first happened, this Russell Wilson signs with Steelers stuff, I was surprised that a lot of people were framing this as a competition with Kenny Pickett. And I was like, what are, what are you talking about? You know, like this isn't a competition. I, I hate Russ. I don't think Russ is good. But I think he's almost certainly better than Kenny Pickett, right? Am I crazy? So, Evan, what do you think of Russell Wilson to the Steelers in this quote-unquote competition with Kenny Pickett? I mean, they gave up on Kenny Pickett last year when they benched him for Mason Rudolph, who they didn't even re-sign this offseason and let go for a $3.6 million deal to Tennessee. Yeah. Um, so... I think they're done with Kenny Pickett, essentially, outside of him just being a backup. Yeah. And I think that the way that they're going to be extremely run heavy, obviously they have Arthur Smith at offensive coordinator. They are built, I mean, they've got two really, I don't want to say Najee Harris is really good, but they have two backs that they can lean on for a lot of usage. They were one of the best run blocking teams in the NFL last year after they installed Broderick Jones at right tackle. He should only get better in his second season. I think that they, they're going to go back to like old school, extreme run heavy offense and Russell Wilson and hope that Russell Wilson can like make plays on, you know, in certain third down, uh, third and long situations and in the fourth quarter. Uh, and, and they're going to try to win close games. It's, it's not going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do think it could, it could be all right for George Pickens. I mean, yeah. at least his. His, his, uh, his target share should be really, really high, especially after they traded Deontay Johnson. Well, that is a great segue, Evan. You're a professional because move number 11 is Steelers trade Deontay Johnson to the Panthers for a late round pick swap. Before we get to Deontay Johnson, let's talk about the George Pickens stuff for a second here because George Pickens is left to be the alpha for Russ, at least on paper. At least on paper, it's a fit, right? Russ, what Russ does best is these deep moon balls outside. Russ never throws over the middle. George Pickens doesn't really play over the middle. It, it just fits, right? And then you throw in that Deontay Johnson's not there. 
without Deontay Johnson last year, I thought Pickens was very good. Earned 29% of the targets, 3.0 yards per route run, as Daigle pointed out on Twitter. And so, yeah, it seems really good for George Pickens. I could see him getting steam to some degree. Our initial ranking on George Pickens, I have to pull it up here for uh, in a second, Evan. But yeah, what do you think of the Deontay Johnson trade and what it means for George Pickens? You know, it's just a matter of Carolina realizing that they had to put some weapons around Bryce Young. They also, the Panthers also uh, made two huge signings on the offensive line at guard. Rob Hunt, a five-year, $100 million deal, and Damian Lewis, a four-year, $40 million, was announced as four, uh, four for 53, but it's actually four for 40. But, you know, they, they're, they're trying to firm up the interior of the pocket for Bryce Young. You remember – those old Saints teams, they invested in centers and guards. The, the, the comparison around the league, at least coming out of Alabama for Bryce Young, was Drew Brees. If you think about that, keeping keeping that the uh, the interior of the pocket protected with big bodies and Deontay Johnson upgrading the uh, the, the uh, perimeter pass, ca- pass catcher core. I mean, they the Panthers needed so much help, and they went out and they got some. So, yeah, just going back to Pickens real quick. We have him 56 overall right around Christian Kirk, Jaden Reed, Terry McLaurin. He's going to be an exciting pick. He's not going to be cheap. But again, I do think he's a really good fit with Russ. The Deontay Johnson thing, last year, everybody wanted to make excuses for Bryce Young, right? Everyone wants to make excuses. And the number one excuse that I saw from people was no one's open, right? He draws back. There's no one open, which whatever. you, Deontay Johnson gets open, you know, so... From that perspective, I see why they went out and got Deontay Johnson. Duke can get open. He's going to give Bryce Young something to look at uncovered. So from that perspective, I thought it was fine. But man, it's hard to be excited about Deontay. As I mentioned, we have George Pickens, 56 overall. Deontay down here at 67 overall as the alpha for Bryce Young. All right. Move number 10. This one was weird. Devin Singletary. Out of all the running back moves, I thought this one was the worst. Devin Singletary, three years, $16.4 million with the Giants. I couldn't find the exact guarantees. Rumor was like $9.5 million guaranteed. I mean, Giants have so many holes. Why do you have to do this at running back? You know, you're going to be out there with Daniel Jones again. Drew Locke's going to be the backup. And then the Giants also went and spent like $150 million on Brian Burns, which, you know, it's probably okay, but they're not going to be good in Brian Burns' salary time in the time of this deal. So I don't know, Evan, some weird things I thought from the Giants. What do you think of Singletary and the Burns moves? I mean, the Devin Singletary signing makes sense from the standpoint that he has that familiarity from Buffalo with Brian Dayball. And Devin Singletary is, you know, not a, not a very talented running back, but he is a, a running back that coaches really like because he does, you know, he executes the offense. Um, you know, he doesn't put the ball on the ground. He can pass protect. But, yeah, n- nothing to get really excited about here. Devin Singletary to the Giants. They did make some moves on the offensive line. They signed John Runyon from the Packers, three years, $30 million to play right guard. And Jermaine Illuminor from the Raiders, who probably is going to push Evan Neal either to the bench or over to left guard. Andrew Thomas comes back at left tackle. They use a second-round pick on center John Michael Schmitz last year. So maybe they can get some cooking on the offensive line. I mean, they've made a lot of investments in it at this point. Move number nine was one that came out of left field, like no reporting on it whatsoever. Calvin Ridley signs with the Titans four years, 92 million reported 50 million guaranteed. Now everybody thought Calvin Ridley was either going to go back to the Jaguars or go to the Patriots. Titans come out of left field for a, massive deal 50 million guaranteed for a 29 year old wide receiver who honestly hasn't been great in a long time I thought he was fine last year but not great and then this all goes back to people want to crush them because they didn't give AJ Brown the bag that was obviously the previous regime that got that regime fired effectively by letting AJ Brown go but now they spent all this money on DeAndre Hopkins they spent all this money on Calvin Ridley it strikes me as a weird way to build a team Evan, what do you think of the Calvin Ridley massive deal that went down? I believe that was yesterday, Wednesday. Yeah, it came out of nowhere. 
Um, I wonder what they're going to do with DeAndre Hopkins because they can save $10.5 million by moving on from him. Or are they going to bring him back with Traylon Burks and Calvin Ridley and Chig Oconquo and try to load, you know, and t- they, just, they signed Tony Pollard and try to give Will Levis his best possible chance to succeed? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it would be interesting if they went and got Justin Fields, honestly. But uh, I don't know. I, I, it, it seems like they're trying to build around Will Levis. But I, I, I'm still a little bit skeptical that they're going to bring back DeAndre Hopkins. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, they certainly have a lot of talent on offense now, right? You mentioned move number eight. I'll throw in here. Move number eight is Tony Pollard signs with the Titans. Three years, $24 million. They certainly have a lot of talent, right? Tony Pollard. Tajay Spears, I think, can definitely play. I think they'll roughly split the backfield evenly. Ridley, Hopkins. Traylon Burks, Chigakwankwo, they're talented. If Will Levis is good, I guess I could see this being exciting. I'm just not sure I saw enough from Will Levis. I saw Will Levis be fun last year. I don't know how often Mm -hmm. I saw him be good, but he was certainly fun to watch last year and was not afraid to push the ball down the field. So yeah, super interesting. What do you think of the Pollard move considering how bad he struggled last year in Dallas for much of the year and then how he fits with Taji Spears? Just in terms of Levis, um, you know, he had some really bad underlying metrics. I know he, like, he came out piping hot, but, mm-hmm. you know, he's, I don't know, he's, he's got some issues. We'll, we'll talk about that more um, when, you know, when, as we get closer to the season. But he had a very, I would say, up and down rookie season at best. Yeah. Um, Tony Pollard. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird because Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears kind of their, their skill sets o- overlap a little bit. But, uh, I actually, I mean, I would, I would give the edge to Tony Pollard. I, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a 50, 50 situation. I think it's probably a little bit more 58, 42, mm-hmm. something like that. I mean, they gave Tony Pollard decent money, three years, 21 million. It was announced as 24. It's really 7 million a year. Um, but I mean, he was good after he kind of overcame the residual effects of that broken leg slash ankle last year from week 11 on. I, I think he's better than Tajay Spears. Okay, yeah. I, I just think that they want to give... I mean, Tajay Spears almost played half the snaps last year when Derek yeah. Henry was there, you know, so... Um, it is a new coaching staff. It is a new coaching staff. Yeah. Um. By the way, this Calvin Ridley deal, I, I don't want to keep harping on it, but like if you're T Higgins and you see this deal, yeah. four years, 92 with 50 million guaranteed, I mean, that's why you ask for a trade because now the wide receiver market has been reset and T Higgins certainly, I think, would command more than Calvin Ridley. Right. Another thing about the Titans probably had the worst offensive line in the league last year. They yeah. did add Lloyd Cushenberry yeah. at center, but man, their offensive line still looks really bad. I mean, they need a left tackle, they need a right guard. You know, I, I they're still in trouble up front. Move number seven: Gabe Davis does a three-year deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Report is thirty-nine million, eleven million at signing for Gabe. You know. I thought there was still a chance Ridley might go back to Jacksonville, but it looks like they're going to roll with this plan of Gabe Davis effectively outside clearing out for Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. And I actually kind of like that plan. I mean, Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk can win over the middle of the field in a big way. I'm not ruling out Gabe Davis from improving and being able to win consistently on the outside. He didn't do it in Buffalo consistently enough for anyone. But yeah, Evan, how do you think Gabe fits in with this Jacksonville offense? a role player on the perimeter. You know, I, I think we've seen enough of Gabe Davis. I mean, he can have moments, but he's really inconsistent and, you know, doesn't play like a high volume role. Uh, So I I don't think that this was the plan for the Jaguars. I think that they thought that they were going to get back Calvin Ridley. They were, you know, we heard so many reports that Calvin Ridley wanted to go back to Jacksonville. Tennessee came in and just absolutely blew, blew him away with their contract offer. But I don't think that this was the plan. Mm. I, I think that Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, and Christian Kirk, that's one of the worst three receiver sets in the NFL. Mm. I, I think that they wanted back Calvin Ridley and they were going to cut Zay Jones. That would have saved them like $5 million against the cap. Um, th- this was not the plan, I don't think. I, I would consider Evan Ingram a wide receiver for them, right? I mean, that's yeah. effectively what he plays. So if you add him to the mix, I don't think it's as bad as Evan does. But yeah, I, mm. I, I do agree. It probably wasn't the plan. It seemed like Calvin Ridley back to Jacksonville was certainly, certainly the plan. Speaking of wide receivers, 
Michael Pittman re-signs with the Colts three years up to $71.5 million. Colts also signed Joe Flacco. The Joe Flacco thing I thought was weird. You know, normally I would want a backup that is similar to my starter. Obviously, Joe Flacco could not be more different than Anthony Richardson. The thing on Pittman, though, I underrated him too much for too long last year, just being the first read on the RPO stuff over and over and over again for this Colts offense was, I mean, just a printing press in terms of volume. So good deal. I don't think Michael Pittman is like a breakout massive candidate, but dude is going to be solid. Evan, what do you think of the Colts bringing back Michael Pittman? They made that a huge priority. I mean, Chris Ballard said at the combine, he's not going anywhere. They franchise tagged him and almost immediately signed him to a three-year, $70 million contract, making him one of the highest paid receivers in the NFL. Yeah. Um, he, and he's going to come back with that same role. I mean, he, he's going to be an every week wide receiver too in fantasy. We have him 37th overall right now. Market is closer to 30th overall. And we've gotten some questions on why we're lower than market on Michael Pittman. Once you start doing projections and you start giving Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson this huge amount of carries, and then around the goal line, Anthony Richardson, a huge amount of touchdowns and goal line carries. It's just harder for guys like Michael Pittman to get there. But yeah, he's certainly going to be a solid player. Again, we do have him 37 overall, which is quite high, just not as high as market. And so far, you know, we still got the draft, of course. They have not added anything in terms of pass catchers. Yeah. They, you know, their their depth chart is still Josh Downs in the slot, Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman outside, and just a bunch of a bunch of dudes at tight end. Move number five. This was the second worst running back move, I thought. DeAndre Swift, three years, 24 million with the Bears, includes 15.3 million guaranteed. I mean, they had Roshan Johnson, they had Khalil Herbert. I think both of them can play. And it's not like DeAndre Swift was even good last year behind one of the NFL's best offensive lines. I mean, DeAndre Swift last year was worse than Alexander Madison and Josh Kelly in rush yards over expectation. DeAndre Swift was 46th among all running backs in PFF grades, really low. So I didn't see a need for this for the Bears. And it's not even like a luxury because I don't even know that DeAndre Swift is that much better than Khalil Herbert. Maybe I'm too down on DeAndre Swift. But yeah, Evan, what do you think of the Bears going out and getting DeAndre Swift? This was the run one running back who I thought got clearly overpaid. Uh, and the Bears came out like guns blazing. Like that was one of the first signings off the board. I was like, what? Like, okay. The Bears had an awesome offseason last year because the Panthers just bent over and let them take it uh, on, <laughs> on, the, um, on that trade for the number one overall pick. And they are having a, br the Bears are having a brutal offseason so far. Can't get anything for Justin Fields, you know, a bunch of, okay signings you know it's just uh it, it's rough it's rough uh, yes almost certainly gonna take and, and, and it's not a great landing spot i don't think for deandre swift yeah. either because they're going to continue to use khalil herbert and um uh, roshan johnson in, in in roles deandre swift has never been a high volume back they they did have a really good running game last year as a unit but it was rare that we that we were able to rely on, on on any specific member of the backfield. While we're on the Bears, it seems almost clear now that they're taking Caleb Williams. Justin Fields has found zero market whatsoever. And part of this, of course, is because you need to pay Justin Fields at some point. Guys like Russell Wilson and other guys that got signed, you'd, you would not need to make the financial commitment to. There's not many landing spots for Justin Fields left. Evan mentioned he'd like to see him on the Titans. Are you surprised at what's happened to Justin Fields, Evan? And what do you think? ends up happening with him I thought it became so I went into the combine thinking that the Bears could get like a, a two and a five for Justin Fields it became clear that his market wasn't even that strong in Indianapolis I was still thinking maybe a three and a five and at this point I'm wondering could they even get a five for Justin Fields I mean so yeah it's, it's been surprising but again at the combine it, it became clear that his market was not nearly as strong as I think anybody would have anticipated. And now I, there has been more talk of the Bears just bringing back Justin Fields. It's not worth it to trade him. Having a quarterback competition, you know, in theory, between him and Caleb Williams. And I don't know, I, you know, it, it's not a good, the, the, nothing's going right for the Bears so far this offseason. Nothing. You know, I, I thought Justin Fields would make sense as a backup to Anthony Richardson or a backup to Jalen Hurts or something like that, but you can't have it be too expensive. So, you know, is what it is.
I also think that New England would still be an interesting landing spot yeah. for Justin Fields. Uh, okay. Move number four is Aaron Jones. So what happened with Aaron Jones is the Packers asked him to take another big pay cut after he took a big pay cut the year before. He they asked him to take another big pay, pay cut. He says F off. So they say, fine, you're gone. They sign Josh Jacobs, reported as four years, 48 million. But thanks to Andrew Brandt, we know that it's really one year, 14.3 million with team options after that. So let's start with Josh Jacobs. You know, Josh Jacobs is a horse, man. I mean, the guy can touch the ball 20, 25 times in a game. No problem. I don't think he's like great, but he's fine. He enters an offense, which I think is pretty running back friendly, given the way that Jordan Love played last year. So this is a pretty exciting one for fantasy. I think, Evan, how do you think Josh Jacobs fits with the Packers? I think right now, I mean, you've got to project him for one of the biggest workloads in the NFL. First of all, the, the only dudes behind him are Emmanuel Wilson and Ellis Merriweather. Mm-hmm. I assume the Packers will add another back, maybe via the draft. Uh, but A.J. Dillon's not coming back. And it on paper, Josh Jacobs projected for like 400 touches right now. I mean, in, in a very good situation. And I, I think it's always important to remember how well Jordan Love played despite massive injuries around him last year. I mean, Jaden Reed was hurt for stretches. Um, Christian Watson was hurt like most of the year. Uh, Dontavian Wicks w- was uh, hurt for stretches. Aaron Jones was hurt for like half of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the arrow is pointing up, I think, on the Packers a- a- as a team. And I think this is a really good landing spot for Josh Jacobs in the short term. I was reading Matthew Berry's uh, report from the Combine. One thing he highlighted was the Packers say they're high on Emmanuel Wilson. So you can file that away for what it's worth. They claim they're high on Emmanuel Wilson. But yes, we are high on Josh Jacobs. We have moved Josh Jacobs up to 21st overall in the latest run of our ranking solid mid round two pick as things stand right now, I think. All right. Aaron Jones thing. So... You know, they have to take a pay cut. He says no. He ends up as a free agent, signs with the Vikings, the rival Vikings, the hated Vikings. One year, six million guaranteed plus one million in incentives. The crazy thing is, if they're both perfectly healthy and I need to win a game, I think I'd rather have Aaron Jones than Josh Jacobs. But he's 29 years old. He's been banged up a ton. And it just felt like the Packers didn't think they could rely on him anymore. And so they made the move to Josh Jacobs. I really think that's what it comes down to. Jacobs is a little bit younger. He might be a little bit less explosive or much less explosive, but he's younger and he's probably more durable and the Packers decided to make the move. Now, Aaron Jones will be competing with Ty Chandler for reps in Minnesota with a quarterback, which we don't know, Sam Darnold, or maybe someone else. Evan, what do you think of the Aaron Jones saga this free agency period? Yeah, I mean, there was a point in time where it looked like <clears throat> they might roll with Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones, but Aaron Jones refused a pay cut. Uh, apparently, the Packers were offering like one year six million, and he went to the Vikings for one year seven million. So I think he maybe felt like disrespected by the Packers. Ends up going to a division rival, and um, I think it's a good situation for Aaron Jones. Again, awesome situation for Josh Jacobs. I'm not burying Ty Chandler, by the way. Aaron Jones has a pretty lengthy injury history. We saw, again, he pulled that hamstring in week one last year and missed, you know, a lot of time. Um, He's 29 years old. So I I think that Ty Chandler still holds a lot of value and and, and it remains like a a really strong sleeper. Obviously, he was at the top of the depth chart before free agency began, but I I still feel, feel very good about him as like a mid to late round pick yeah market is going to be far more in on aaron jones i think you know right now we have aaron jones around 82 overall and ty chandler down in the 140s but you know like evan said major durability question i thought ty chandler at the end of the year actually played really well and i know that yeah, the vikings thought he did as well yeah i mean kevin o'connell was talking him up yeah i i think he's going to have a role either way you can't really you know expect to use aaron jones as a high volume workhorse All right. We've made it to move number two, the second most important free agency move, and that is Saquon Barkley leaving the Giants for the rival Eagles three years up to 46 million, 26 million guaranteed. I thought it was a bit of an out of character move for Howie Roseman 
to sign a 27-year-old running back and give him $26 million guaranteed. However, Harry Roseman is willing to go out of his way to find outliers. And I think he thinks, or they think, that Saquon Barkley is that outlier, similar to the deal the 49ers did for Christian McCaffrey a few years back, where they gave up a bunch and a bunch of money to get him. Now, Saquon has been far more boom bust, far less productive than CMC. Evan, what was your reaction to Saquon landing with the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't think it's that much money. I mean, so when, when I, the more I thought about it, I, I heard that the Eagles were interested in him. I was like, really? Howie Roseman's going to do that? But with the cap going up to what, 260 million, uh, it, it's not much different on a, on, a, in a, on an annual basis. And this is a solid three year, $37.5 million contract. There, there's not a whole lot of fluff in there. But I mean, it's about the same, you know, adjusted for inflation as what Saquon Barkley played on the franchise tag at a little bit over 10 million last year on an annual basis. So it, it's not that big of an investment, I, I don't think. Um, and, I, and I do think that the Eagles are going to try to run the ball more. They've been very, very pass heavy under Nick Sirianni. I think that they're going to try to run the ball more. And that is reflected in their willingness to pay Saquon Barkley. One thing that I've heard floated is that Jalen Hurts has been banged up, right? End of last year, he was banged up. Maybe Jalen Hurts, they want Jalen Hurts to run the ball less. Maybe they want him to tush push less. Maybe they want him to not take as many hits from big guys in the line. And now you got Saquon Barkley there. Because, I mean, Saquon Barkley, I think, has been fine as a goal line back. So what do you think about all that stuff, Evan? Because that's big for fantasy if you think Jalen Hurts is going to run less. Yeah, I think he'll run a little bit less. Um, I still feel good about their their push their tush push offense. Um, I, I I don't think that that like you know uh, subjects Jalen Hurts to injury risk. Certainly not as much as like him scrambling outside of the pocket or taking hits in the pocket or anything like that. So I, I and and they're, and they're going to plug in Cam Jurgens, who they drafted in the second round a couple years ago. He's going to move from guard into center. Uh, to replace J Jason Kelsey, and they gave Landon Dickerson mm -hmm. a massive uh, extension. So their their interior offensive line is still really strong. I think the tush push is going to keep going. But, yeah, I think that they're going to want to just run the ball more, period, with Saquon Barkley, and that actually will will reduce the, the risk of injury for Jalen Hurts. Who do you think well, – I mean, right now, who do you think you'd rather have in fantasy, Jacobs or Barkley? Jacobs, obviously, potential for three-down workhorse role. Yeah, Jacobs. Jacobs. Yeah, when, when you said that 21 number, and I haven't done any rankings yet, I, I feel like that's low Yeah, on Josh Jacobs. I, I'm, I'm probably going to have him higher than that. We have Jacobs 21 overall, Saquon 27 overall right now. Um, okay, drum roll, please. Brings us to our number one move of free agency, and that is Derek Henry signs with the Baltimore Ravens. Two years, up to 20 million, 9 million guaranteed not much money right two years up to 20 million nine million guaranteed for and the reason it's not much money is because derrick henry is entering his age 29 season however however i actually thought derrick henry was pretty good still last year his missed tackle per rush rate was in line with his career he was 17th out of 49 running backs in next gen's rush yards over expectation seventh out of 63 in pff rush grades I thought the Ravens would make a splash like this, right? They, they sign guys like Odell. They sign like veterans that have big names. I thought they were in the mix for Saquon or Derrick Henry. They ended last year with a mess at the running back position. Obviously lost J.K. Dobbins, lost Keaton Mitchell. Now they get Derrick Henry. On paper seems like an awesome fit and just like so star-laden. Lamar and Derrick Henry together in the backfield. So Evan, what do you think of Derrick Henry's decision to join the Ravens. Yeah, Derrick Henry was really good last year when he was not playing the Texans, who you remember held him. I mean, they stonewalled him twice in, in you know in, in their two meetings, but they had that one game. He had 16 carries for nine yards. Other than that, he was pretty good throughout the season. And um, we we anticipated this because the Ravens tried to trade for Derrick Henry before the deadline. Apparently, they had a deal in place and the Titans pulled out for whatever reason. Maybe Mike Grable was trying to uh, save his job, which th that did not happen. Uh, but they, but the Titans pulled out on that trade. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, I love the pairing. Keaton Mitchell is probably going to miss the first couple games of the season, but I love that pairing from a complimentary standpoint. Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell and Lamar Jackson. I mean, this is one of the most exciting backfields in the NFL. Yeah, and I mean, people are going to say, oh, well, Lamar steals so many rushing towns. That's, Lamar doesn't really steal nearly as many as someone like Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen. I mean, just last year alone, Gus Edwards scored 13 rushing touchdowns. Derrick Henry is going to have a big rushing projection here for us this year. And let me just check where we're at right now on Derrick Henry. We're at 39 overall on Derrick Henry, which honestly for a running back that is about to be 29 years old is very high for us to have mm -hmm. a 29 year old running back up at 39 and, uh, overall. Especially a running back that doesn't catch a lot of passes. And a running back does not catch a lot of passes. Exactly. All right. Hope this was a good way for you guys to get caught up on everything that happened in free agency. Again, if you want more on free agency fallout, head to establish the run dot com. You will find our fantasy winners and losers plus breakdowns of all the biggest moves. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening anywhere else, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube. We continue to put out content on the YouTube channel that is not on the audio feed. So if you're looking for more, head to the Establish the Run channel on YouTube. It is indeed completely free. For Evan, for Bruce Luke, for Bruce Ryan, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.